Hello, this is like welcome to this is Augusta Ali Pagak. I Augusta Ali. Welcome to my interview. I'm here to interview you, Jackie Newman Jones. Neiman. Neiman Jones. Sorry. But, mm-hmm. So basically you're the, you're the American artist who is best known to play the role that be in Manos, the hands of fate. Yes. So I got I got a lot of questions. Let's start like all right. All right. Um, what was your career like before you started the movies? Like, did you ever do anything in your career before? Well, I was in that movie when I was six years old, and my dad starred in it, and he was also an artist. But I've been an artist my whole life. Um, I've done. I started my own business four or five times different businesses to do with art, but the longest one was for 30 years doing, um, I worked Mm -hmm. for clients in their homes, you know, doing uh, uh, painting special wall treatments like plastering and uh, marbling and murals and and all of that, but um, I also sell my art and I wrote a book about being in the movie that I was in as a child Um, because the movie, uh, it it was just a very low budget film made in El Paso, Texas uh, in 1966. And it just basically, it just disappeared for 27 years. And then uh, a very popular show on television, Mystery Science Theater 3000, found it and they specialize in showing low budget bad films <laughs> and so this film became famous as one of the worst movies ever made <laughs> i mean it, it's taught in film school is everything not to do in filmmaking it's it's really bad <laughs> it was supposed to be a horror film but it was really more of a horrible film yeah but- yeah, I understand. So you were in Curse of Bigfoot as an extra? Yeah, another movie? really bad movie. Can you tell mm-hmm. me more about that? Uh, well, that was just by chance. My high school uh, theater teacher was friends with a, a guy from Los Angeles who had started making a film 15 years earlier and then decided he wanted to finish it and he needed a a classroom scene of high school students. So my theater teacher set it up and uh, the guy came and filmed us in our classroom. But it's just kind of weird that I personally have been in two of the worst films known <laughs> i mean you know there's there's a lot of worse films but these two became uh popular and so you know I, i'm i'm a professional artist um uh, my work is good my dad's work was good it was just we just happened to be in uh either the right place or the wrong place at the right time um that's that's cool so can you tell me a little bit more about your father, Tom Newman? Tom Newman, yeah. He was, uh, well, he was, he had his full-time job, but he was very involved in community theater in El Paso. And he usually played the lead roles in the plays that he was in. And, um, and he was a very good artist. He created a lot of art from, um, um, you know, he just had a very specific style. But I followed in his footsteps because I'm interested in do many of the similar things that he did, you know, as an artist and actor. And... Yeah, pretty much. So, so when you when you went to return for the role of Debbie in the twenty eighteen film Madness Return, that the same year you also played Madness in the prequel Madness: The Rise of Torgo. 
Oh yeah. Yeah, that was uh that was because <laughs> it's it's uh it's just a really interesting community. There have been a lot of uh projects that have been inspired by Manos and Hands of Fate. And uh a lot of them are really quite talented. Like uh there's one uh, called Manos, the Hands of Felt out of Seattle, Washington, and it's actually puppet theater. <laughs> and there's been some stage productions, but the Rise of Torgo was just one of those things I, I was asked to do, and I said, I said yes, and uh, it's not a very good film, but, but then we did Manos Returns, and I'm one of the writers on it, and I starred in it, and... Um, and I worked with some very talented people, and I'm very proud of that project. And uh, I'm working on a new project now that's really good, too. It's a web series. So we're just getting a distributor, and and I hope that'll be out soon. That's called the Monos Chronicles. That's, that's good. Oh, you mean the, the, the follow-up TV series, Monos, the Debbie Chronicles? Yes. That's it. It's, uh, it started off as the Debbie Chronicles, but the name's been changed. But you can see the, um, the trailer for the pilot episode on YouTube under uh, the Monos Chronicles. Yeah. That's, that's good. Mm -hmm. So, in your early life, like, what were your, what were your mothers like in your early life? What was what? Your mother, what, like, like, what was like your early life, early life with your mother? Oh, my mother was a teacher, but she was also very creative. So, like, for instance, in the movie Mono's Hands of Fate, my dad starred in the film, but he also did all the art and the props, and, uh, and my mother made the costume. She was a very good seamstress, so... I learned a lot from her, and uh, and I followed her as well. I I create things out of fabric as well as painting and sculpture, like my dad, and uh, and I also teach. I teach art classes, so I think I took after both my parents pretty strongly for the things that were their passions. All right. So, can you tell me about this Harold P. Warren Productions? What was the company Productions like? Well, Harold P. Warren was the guy that wrote, directed, and produced Monos and Hands of Fate. So, it was his project, his idea, and he was in the film as well. But, um, you know, he made all the decisions. So, you know, the nature of the film rests firmly on him. <laughs> Unfortunately, you know, the film, like I said, it disappeared for 27 years. So he died in 1985 and it was rediscovered in 1993. So sadly, he never got to see his film come back into the world and become something that people really enjoy. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So did, did you... Are, are, are your Monos movies going to receive a video game adaption? Yes, there's all kinds of things. There's trading cards. There's uh, a couple of video games. Uh, there's um, books. There's coloring books. What else? I mean, there's four stage productions. There's just so many. There's so many things that have been inspired by it. But yeah, there is, um, it's a Nintendo style video game, I believe. Um, that's good. So, like, alright, okay, like, who played, like, male teenager Carr? Like, his name was Bernie Rosenblum? Yeah, Ro Bernie Rosenblum. He was also, um, the assistant cameraman and one of the two crew members, but... Uh, and he was the stunt man as well, so he did all the male stunts. But yeah, he was part of the theater. In fact, all the men in the film were part of uh, that local community theater at the festival theater. So they all knew each other. They were all friends. But 
but Bernie and uh, and the cameraman were best friends. So they were they they pulled some pranks on the director on Harold P. Warren. They, like they left a beer bottle on set, you know, to, to see if he was paying attention when you know things like that. But yeah, Bernie was he was a jokester. They played they played a lot of poker together and such. Yeah, that's that's pretty nice. So. Oh, and and the 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 car that he was in the Triumph Spitfire was his car, so he was very very proud to be able to show his car in the movie. Uh, okay, like so when you all recorded like record like sounds for the movie before like how you dub the voices record them in a sound studio like. Well, the the camera they used back in 1966 was actually um, Filmo 70. It was a wind-up camera, and it only shot 32 seconds of film at a time, and it shot silent. So, so the movie had to be dubbed, but only four of the men went to the sound studio, and they had to go to um, Houston, Texas, which is 800 miles from... El Paso, so they took a road trip. They did all the male voices, and uh, Hal Warren's sister-in-law, who lived in Houston, came to the studio, and she dubbed all the women's voices and my six-year-old voice. <laughs> and uh, and I, I will say that at the premiere, Nobody had told the little kid, you know, the six-year-old, that her voice had been dubbed. So it was a pretty big shock in the theater when my mouth opened on the screen and this middle-aged woman's voice came out. <laughs> and I could hear the whole audience laughing. So it was, it was uh, I mean, it's funny now, but it was pretty humiliating at the time. Yeah, pretty much. So... So uh, in your new in your new series for like the Meadows new series, what is that be like like a like a is like a like a, a sequel or like a, a continuation of your other movies? It's um it's like Manos Returns. It's like two different possible outcomes. Like um, Manos ends with me as the little girl appearing to be the next wife of the master who already has six wives and uh so the very end of the movie leaves you wondering what's happened to the little girl and in Manos returns the story is what if little debbie had been raised by this cult of strange people and what would she be like and in that universe i grow up and become in i I'm in charge of the place. I've become the master. But in the Manos Chronicles, the story is, what if Debbie had escaped the cult as a child and has been in hiding her whole life? So now in this story, I'm, uh, I'm looking to do good in the world, to, to find redemption for other people that have been victimized. Okay. So that's the, the that's the sequels about it. All right then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you film in the desert and the sea, are you are you able like have like have water with you if you're in the desert? Oh, you just adapt. I mean, when you're raised in a place like that, if you go on a hike, you always had you know, a canteen of water or a bottle of water. So, so, yeah, I mean, it was just a few miles outside of El Paso, but um, everything had to be taken out there. You know, the food, the water, the lights, everything. Okay, like, so basically going forward, like, what do you hope for this new Manos movie? Where you, you want to go to Netflix or ended up on HBO Max? Well, I'm, you know, 
I'm not on the production side of it, so I'm not sure exactly where it is in that process, but I know that the producer's looking for uh, that type of distributor, because if we can get signed up with someone like Netflix or HBO, then, then we'll get the funding to create more episodes. That, that's good. You need funding for your episodes. Like, you need... Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, do you like pro wrestling? Uh, no, but my ex-husband sure did. <laughs> and, um, well, as far as uh, wrestling goes, I don't know. Have you ever heard of um, Gene Snitsky? Yeah, I've heard about him. He... Yeah, well, there was another movie that was got partially made, and um, Gene Snitsky he was my co-star, so I got to hang out with him and meet him. and And I'm only five foot two. He's huge. He's a big, big man. I look like a little kid next to him. And then uh, Ryan Jimmo was uh, one of the world champions with MMA, and he was my other co-star. So. I got to hang out with these guys for a, a week or so. Unfortunately, the film never got finished, but but it was a lot of fun. I, I made some friends, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that's good. Okay, so one more question. Like, the year thought, like, like, it was like, it was like, a, a, a film like it almost completely obscure. Like it was like until 1992 when it was featured on the Mystery Science Theater 3000. Yes. Yeah, that was Monos and Hands of Fate in uh, January 1993. They put it on and it just became an instant hit. And they have. Um, they have uh, an award, they give out awards for their favorite bad movies every year at Thanksgiving time in November. And uh, Monos and Hands of Fate has been voted a fan favorite two or three times since then. Yeah. yeah that's good. Okay, thank you for your time, my interview. It will it will be uploaded on on Monday. I just want to let you know. Oh, this is Augusta Ali podcast. Like, thank you for an interview with me, Miss Jackie. Yes, thank you. Okay, one more thing, everyone. Please go to buyfire.com for our merch. Search Augusta Ali for. For to find our merch, search Augusta Ali on bonfire.com. All right. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you. See yeah. you later. I'm back for a quick minute. Augusta Ali here to deliver a big bombshell, I promise. After the interview, I did promise that. Apparently, there has been confirmation I got from my sources that Tay Milo, Sammy Guevara, will appear on All Out, and they will have a sex celebration at the pay-per-view live on All Out. It is, folks, it is happening. That is the biggest bombshell I am dropping. Tay Mello and Guevara at All Out in a sex celebration segment. J just watch All Out for it. See you there.